Welcome to another episode of the Hot and Healthy Show. And on the Hot and Healthy Show, we're always bringing you experts and talking about topics that are going to make it possible for you as a woman in business to have more success with less stress. Avoid some of the common mistakes that women make um, in terms of, in this case, we're going to be talking about, should you have your own website? Should you do it yourself? Should you outsource that? And what are some of the pitfalls? And also, if you are going to do it yourself, what are the five things that you need to do to have a successful website? Now, I've spent a fortune over the years making terrible mistakes about setting up a website and changing my website and changing platforms. And it's it's a nightmare. So I'm super excited to have on the show today, Lorraine Seppers, who is a website expert. And she's going to be sharing her top, five tips, the five steps that you need to put a successful website together. I'm so glad she's here. I'm hoping that her magic is going to help all of us save time and money and have a website that's actually effective and doesn't drive us crazy. So I'm your host, Nicole Van Haddam, holistic success coach, TEDx speaker, and three times bestselling author. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad you're here, Lorraine. Otherwise, I'd be talking to myself. So welcome yes. to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, why should we be listening to you? What makes you an expert in this area? Um, I've been involved in websites in almost 10 years now. Uh, the f first years, um, not too um, involved, but yeah, building websites and learning a lot about it. Uh, the last year, though, I've been fully, fully involved and I've done a training here in Australia as well uh, and have been trained by the SEO and website gurus uh, of, um, of Australia that are actually in, in Brisbane, really close to us, so it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, so um, very involved in and, and setting up our my own business at the moment as well. Uh, started a year ago uh, with my website design business, so uh, I know exactly how it is to get started because yeah that's for us a new part to it as well so and so when you say us is it are you a solopreneur woman in business or is there more to to the team? no i'm i'm working with my husband uh, and he's more a technical person so uh, i'm more the design side and the seo side and he's the, the technical background in the business so yeah we're working how's together that, how's that going working together as a husband and wife couple Oh, well, we worked well together. We've done it before in other things. So we knew that we can work together and uh, we have both our very different way of looking at things. So um, that makes for good discussions. And um, but it's, it's going really well. Yeah. Luckily, we are on a five acre block. <laughs> so we have space. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had enough of being in the same room together doing so one of you just goes for a walk out on the um, yeah exactly you have to look at the goats you know I, I can hear the goats calling have to go <laughs> <laughs> jump straight in and because I know that I've, I've seen the brief on your five uh, key steps and, and they're really juicy and meaty so let's get straight into it what would you say is the five key things let's give us give them a summary and then we'll go through each of the points yeah so if, then you start and you want to, to build a website uh, have a good think about what your website is going to be called so we call it your URL that's that's the first step uh, part of that is also where are you hosting? Where is your uh, website going to be uh, situated? Uh, when you've, that's basically the first step you have to take. Then uh, we go to um, setting up the web page uh, as it is. So how, how is it going to look in general? Uh, after that, you have to start adding content, which is, the, I think, the most important step as well. Uh, then a little bit the boring part, which is maintaining. Um, yeah, everything is it's nice and new, but after that, it has to be maintained. And uh, the last part is uh, the SEO, which is the search engine optimization. Uh, so how is Google going to look at you once your site is up and running? So those are the five steps. Wonderful. So let's talk about the URL. Would your name for your website not just be the name of your business? That's not necessary. Uh, so there's a few things you have to think about. If you, your business is really about you, uh, so and you are the product basically, uh, then, uh, and that's also like a fashion designer. In that case, it, it's often a good thing to have your URL as your name, if that's still available, which is of course not always the case. Um, 
but there is other um, other things you can think about if you want to sell your if, if it's a business that you might want to sell then often it's not a good idea to have your name in there uh, because yeah the per piece per person who's going to buy it will have a different name so then it does not really work to transfer this and then you've done a lot of work which is going away because if it can't be transferred it's it's partly gone so uh, don't want to do that there's another option is that you think about the product or your service and what people would look for in google to find you and use that so uh, we have a client in new zealand who is an, a tax accountant and um, his name is is has nothing to do with accountants uh, and we found him taxaccountant.co.nz, which is uh, fantastic for him because that's what he does and that's what people uh, will look for. So then you have already a part of um, your, your Google searches. It's already in there. So that makes it a little bit stronger. It's not, you know, the end of the world if it doesn't work that way, but it makes it a bit stronger. So, yeah. Okay. So let's take me for example. So I, I currently have a website that's my name. Yep. Which has actually been quite useful because over the years I've changed my services. Um, yes. and I never intended to grow my business to sell it. But I know that people aren't look, looking for Nicole Van Haddam. They're looking for things like weight loss, uh, resilience coaching, burnout strategies, that sort of stuff. So it would have been smarter yep. for me to have something like um, quick, fast, easy weight loss.com. <laughs> that would be, have been a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. But yeah, in your case, yeah. Be, Probably the, your name is is a good thing, uh, and you can also run two websites. You know, you could if you say, okay, this is something that one of a service or a product I'm going to focus on. You can run that together, and you can link them. So that's another option that you have. So uh, then you can do both as well. So, but that's for next. That's the next step. Isn't it? That's the next step. Okay. So if you're looking at your your, your base foundational URL, get some advice yeah. from somebody like you to say, well, you know, is it better to position it with the relationship to the service, or should it be the business name? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And also, you know, you're bound a little bit by what's still available. So you have to work with that. And, and what's the difference between getting a .org, .net, .com, .a, .com, .au, all those .dot thingies? Uh, yeah, .com, .au is uh, an Australian website. Uh, so uh, .co, .nz is a New Zealand one. .com and almost everything else is uh, American based. So it depends where you are. If you say, okay, I I'm here in Australia, and I I will my clients will be Australian it's best to get a .com.au. Um, same for if you're in New Zealand and that's why, where you want to do your business. If you say, okay, uh, I might be more worldwide, longer term, then it's better to have a look at the .com or that .net. And there are many new dots possibilities that are available. Uh, .com is still the best way to go, but it gets very long now because there's so much already registered. So there's yeah, a few things to think about there. So yeah, if you are Australian based company and this will be where you are working, it's best to have a .com.au. Okay. Great, great, great. So um, let's talk about the hosting now. Step yep. number two. Yeah. Yeah, that's also a little bit um, related to where you want to do business uh, and what's important for you to choose your hosting uh, company. So if you say, okay, I'm Australian based and my clients will be from Australia, uh, find a hosting company that has its servers because what happens with hosting is basically that's where your website is sitting. It's on their servers, not on your home computer. So, um, so you have to choose well, what's, what's for me the best way to do it? If you want to do it international, uh, it's better to look at a company that has servers like in Singapore, Hong Kong, or the US. Uh, because, yeah, of course, the, the, the less far it has to travel, the faster it is. Um, a lot of local, you have to be a little bit careful with local uh, hosting companies because sometimes it, it, they're not quick, they're, their services are slower, so it slows down your, your website. Yeah. So, yeah, it's something you have to look into. So those are the main things. Where is the server located? Uh, as close as possible to your clients. That's the best way to go. Hmm. Um, and is their is there service uh, fast? Uh, yeah, yeah, good uh, modern technology is important. And yeah, the thing is, which is often the case, the faster and the more modern, the more expensive. So that's something that you have to weigh and see what, what's best for you. 
Oh, that's something that I have never considered. That's completely new to me, but that Very makes good. sense. It makes sense. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, and I would assume that if you're someone who's going to have a very interactive and high traffic um, uh, website, that yes. it's worth paying the extra money to make sure your clients get Definitely. a good experience. Yeah, you, you don't want downtime and you want to make sure that their servers are up to having a lot of traffic on there. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, if you start, uh, you can start with local and it's very easy to transfer because basically you just say, uh, to the, the the company where you have registered your name, you can tell them where to go and look for your website. So, you know, you don't have to stress about it if you're, you know, at a local, a little bit slower in the beginning and say, oh, look, I, I, I need to upgrade. You can change any time. So it's, you know, it, it takes you a few hours, but you can do it. So um, there's growth is, is easily done. Great. Oh, I'm happy about that. Okay. So step <laughs> number three, which is around the look and the content. Uh, yeah. So um, most people, um, yeah, if you want to build your own, own website, let's, let's go from there. Mm. Um, there's, there's two options. You can either go to a WordPress site, which is, you know, what we see with most people using that, uh, which is, um, like the, the industry standard at the moment. Uh, a lot of people use uh, WordPress. There are many, many templates uh, that you can choose. So you can say, okay, I want my website to look this way. You just plug in the, 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 um, the pictures at the right spot and, and you put the text in there. And you'll have a website that is very um, well regarded by Google. Uh, WordPress is what they, what they like. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than going to another provider like Wix or Weebly. Uh, you see that uh, like Wix is very, very easy. It's really like a 10 minute job to, uh, to put a web page together. Um, you know, it's just a few pictures, some text and you've got your online presence. Uh, the disadvantage is it is not um, flexible at all. So it can be okay for, you know, a few months, but as soon as you want to change something, it's, it's not flexible enough mm -hmm. to do that. And that goes for Wix, that goes for Weebly. And uh, you see these fantastic ads at the moment um, for GoDaddy, same thing, you know, your $500 website uh, for the, the hot sauce that runs out of the door <laughs> like hotcakes at the end of the day. Uh, fantastic story, doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, because also Google does not look favorable at these platforms uh, because yeah they want a more professional um, look they want uh, yeah the flexibility there's a lot behind the scenes with, that goes on with your keywords that you can put in um, so there's ways for people to find you that you cannot do at all with Wix and Weebly. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, a longer run is not the, the best way to go. Oh, okay, so I wrote down WordPress, Wix, Weebly and GoDaddy. So these, yeah. um, these are great, simple, quick, easy. So you just need a presence. So I want to talk, I will talk a little bit about, you know, how much would we, should we as different types of business owners be investing in our websites? But that's really yeah. interesting that Google doesn't look favorably at a simple, basic templated website. No. What do you mean by that doesn't look favorably? Well, um, you have to look at Google. Google wants, so what is the Google's business? Be, Google wants to give us as user, everybody who goes onto Google is looking for something and uh, they are in the business of providing good information. And uh, it's, it's helpful to think about it that way, that Google wants people to go onto Google, uh, type in, I want, uh, I'm looking for a uh, dry cleaner in uh, the south of Brisbane. You know, you type that in and then Google wants to show you the best options for you in the south of Brisbane. And that's their business. That's how they basically uh, get people to their website and how they make money. So what Google wants is to provide a quality product. So if you are a fantastic dry cleaner in the south of Brisbane and your website comes up as one of the first 10 in the Google search, and those are the ones that people will click and choose to have a look at, they want to make sure that everybody who goes onto your website as your dry cleaner website, they want to make sure that people have a good experience. Mm -hmm. 
And in Google's eyes, uh, a Wix or a Weebly is too simple. There's not enough behind it. And so in their eyes, it's not a fantastic uh, user experience. And that's why they grade it down. So that is yeah, how they look at it. And so how does that affect us as a business owner? Um, it affects you in the way... It, your, your website is there. If you have a URL and people are looking for your website and type in your URL, you're there. And so there's no effect on in that side. It has effect along if you want to do some SEO uh, longer term or straight away. So if you, if you want to make your website a, a generating tool for, bus for generating new business, it has a quite a big impact. So, you know, if you're really starting off uh, and you don't want to spend any money on it, then it's a good way that at least you can say to people, I have a website and you can put your website on your card. That's definitely a, a very important step. If you want to take it a little bit further, um, yeah, then you, you're, you have to change over and you have to change that because then people will not be able to find you through Google searches. That is basically how you have to see it. Yeah, Google okay. will not show you on the first page of their Google search. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, um, yes, brand new to business, trialing out new product service, yep. new, to, new to business, maybe they've worked for somebody else before, yeah, they, they, they might be thinking, oh, where am I spending my money? Is this really the best place? And it wasn't that long ago that, you know, having a website was optional. It yes. It's been around forever. But now if nope. you don't have a business card and you don't have a website, you don't exist. That's the thing. Yeah. And uh, we, I've actually just heard, I still have to look it up, that uh, there's been research by Telstra, a big report on uh, starting and small business. And uh, they say that uh, more than 50% of uh, other businesses will not do business with a company that does not have a website. I was a bit shocked by that. I didn't know it was uh, like that. But yeah, people really want to have a look at your website before you're being serious. Yeah, yeah I, I would say if you're someone who's serious in business, there's probably four key places people will check you out. One's they're going to look at your business card, so your branding quality yeah. of, that, of that image. Second is... Um, your website third your facebook business page who are you who am i dealing with what type of content are you sharing and then the other one is probably your linkedin profile so if you can clean those four up and have a nice sharp image and presentation and message you're probably on a very good very good start i know i do if i'm going to work with somebody like i checked out all of yours lorraine um it, yes of course. <laughs> I regularly check mine and, and refresh it as well and go, when was the last time I touched base there? Is it still representing me the way I would like it to? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah it's, it, it's, it's important. Yeah. I was just actually talking to a uh, local uh, real estate agent and um, I looked at this website and on the front page, there's parts. So to, there's nothing there. It just says a, fo a, a photo should be up uploaded here. <laughs> it's currently not up. And you're like, Oh, okay. Come on, you guys, you haven't done anything. So yeah, there's, yeah, it definitely has an impact. Absolutely. It does. Yeah. It does. It has a big impact on your credibility. Okay. Absolutely. So once we've decided, you know, we're going to use WordPress or Wix or Weebly or GoDaddy or whichever, then yep. it's around, um, how does it look? Yes. Um, simple, clean, that is the way to go. Um, the times of when we had all this flash stuff and moving parts is all gone. Uh, people get really distracted. Um, the most important thing is that someone who gets onto your website and you know, focus on your homepage for, uh, in the beginning, people within five seconds have to know what your website is about and have an idea of what you're doing and what you can offer them. Uh, if it's not done in five seconds, they're gone. They will click and find another one. So Literally that, five seconds. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. that's the max you have to impress someone. So that's not a lot of time. So be very clear. Um, yeah, if you look at all these moving, the moving banners that we had, you know, that they are all sliding past. I know it's still out there a lot. Google really downgrades your website when you have it because it is not a good thing people don't like it 
What is uh, Google looking for? They want lots of rich content. Very, yeah, rich content, very clear message showing exactly what you do. Uh, simple, uh, definitely uh, in your face, but what, you, what you're about. That has to be, that's the most important part. Yes. I, your and your husband Ward did do an audit on my website and his feedback was pretty direct, which I liked. Oh. <laughs> um, very much that it's like I don't know what you do and people are distracted and you you need to make it really simple give them two things to do that's it keep it really simple and your images yep. are way too high definition it's taking too long to load and I'm oh, like oh yes Ooh. yeah so that's a big one yeah. you do want quality images not stock photos but if it's too no. quality it's detrimental again yeah, but you have, can have quality images that are, you know, not a lot of pixels, so they don't take up a lot of space. And uh, that's important because if your website is slow, look, if someone is sitting there waiting for your website to load for five se seconds, they're gone as well. Yeah. You don't even have the opportunity to show them what you're about at all. So, yeah, those are, yeah, so the speed of your website is definitely one of the, the important things. And that's also another grading thing that Google looks at. Uh, mm. how, how fast is your website and that would include I, mean, I look at websites a lot on my laptop mm -hmm. um, but yep. I would imagine most people are looking on their mobile phones 50% of all the uh, internet traffic is now on mobile phones so that's something that uh, we're yeah we're also in our business changing over more to um, yeah making sure it all looks good on uh, on mobile and that's such a different view and you know buttons and things show up very differently and have to show up very differently and have to be clickable and yeah it's uh, it's a new era as well i think the next two or three years we'll see that 70 to 80 percent of all internet traffic will be through mobile phones yeah so i, that's I would like more. them to make my phone bigger Yes. Yeah. You've got the biggest one. You've got the, yeah, I think I've got your size. I need a big, <laughs> you have to go to a, a like an iPad kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I might have to. And yeah, yeah. but I, I do prefer that when I'm actually working, mm. when I'm sitting at my desk and I, oh, I yeah. set a nice chunk of time and I get it done on the computer and then I walk away because I could spend way too much of my life getting consumed in screens and that's not healthy. It's not going to make us hot and healthy, Lorraine. Uh, I know that. No, we have to go outside and, <laughs> and move. <laughs> and move. So we, we really need to make sure that um, it's a high function, quick function for the person that's going to our website and having a look. We want to make Google yep. happy. Yes, we do. Yeah, right. we do. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if Google is happy, your clients will be happy. Because there's so much research about uh, behind what Google, you know, has. As they have 40 things that they actually grade your website on. We don't know all of them. We know most of them, but we don't know all of them. And um, yeah, the, but the, the important ones are really good content on there. So longer articles, not like through lines on a, on a whole page. They want to see at least 600, 700 words uh, because they want to make sure that people who get to your website get a good experience and can see what you do know that you're knowledgeable about your business so you know everything that you know yeah all the research that google does is basically to make it all easier for us so yeah just have to so say thank you google i mean it's a pain yeah thank you google yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay so um what else is important when we when we're talking about the look and the content um yeah the look yeah, as long as it's it's clear, as long as people can see what you know can choose. Very often, it's very good idea to think about the things that you offer and um, put three options. Usually, is three, four options on your website on the front page that people can choose from. So um, you know, if you only have two, but two is fine too. But um, have have some options on your front page showing. Uh, the different sides of your website so your website think a little bit about it as, as a book as well so how do you um, you know you make chapters in a book make sure you have a, a chapter kind of um, way that people can look at your at your website so make chapters about the different services or products that you have uh, show those on your page so people can click on the the part of your website that they want to see 
um, make sure that uh, there's a very good about us and a very good, good contact me page because um, research shows that people who like the first look of your website, the second page they go to is the about me or the about us. So Google is very uh, impressed with a good about us uh, page where good a bit of content not just one line and one picture uh, a little bit of contact content about you and about your business or other people who are working for you or in your business very important and then of course the contact me it should really have your business name your name uh, your address, uh, all the contact details, uh, a contact form as well. So those are a few things that um, are very, very important and very simple to do. So and anybody can do that. And have your phone number. If you want people to call you, have your phone number everywhere on the website. Yeah. So that's uh, another important part that you want to see. I know there's a lot of businesses that be like, oh, I don't want random people calling me. But actually, that's we, we need to get back to that person-to-person -person contact. And people are yeah. busy, they're distracted, and they'll move on to someone else if they can't you yeah. know, have a touch point with you really fast. Yeah, and a lot of people like to text as well. Um, mm. You might be surprised how many people would love to just to send you a text and say, hey, this or that. or So, you know, with a mobile number, they can text you. And that's important too. Okay. All right. Putting my mobile number back on my website. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit scary. I mean, I, I mean, I'd be delighted if I got a hundred. The only thing is, I'm worried about getting spammed by advertisers and marketing people rather than actual clients. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's more the background of your. That happens more because the background of your website not often the front end so you know you can secure yourself a little bit from that but yeah it will happen it definitely happens there's mm. uh, yeah but well you i'd know. rather that than no one no one contacting them exactly mm. yeah so let's talk, talk about number uh four which is maintaining your website Yes, yes. Well, it's a little bit like the being spammed. Uh, there are definitely still a lot of spammers around. Uh, they will try to use your website for their purposes, which are many, many options. So yeah, once it's there, it has to be protected. You have to make sure that um, nobody can get into the back end of your, of your website. Um, and that really every week there you have to look at what's going on. If you use a template like WordPress, because internet, everything is changing so much all the time. So there's always little updates in the software. Uh, so if you have a, a template that you use from like WordPress, they will send you updates every week, every two weeks, and you have to click a button to make sure that that's actually implemented. Then you have to check if everything is still working. Uh, being online is one of those things, you know, some people can go without being online for a week and not really notice until someone gives them a call and said, oh, I've tried to find your website, but you're not online. So yeah, that can happen too. Um, so definitely something you have to look at. And the other, Part of maintaining is make sure it's always updated so make sure there's not a meeting from four weeks ago that's still on your website as oh I'm excited I'm going to this meeting and it's happened in the past and so that's you know there's back end and there's front end so that's part of maintaining as well make sure your website's up to date oh it's a lot yeah. of work I know there's a bit to do there yes yeah so yeah you have to set it up in a way that can help you uh, do that well yeah and quickly and, yeah. and when it comes to maintaining as well what sort of um, security settings and, and should we have like is it malware and things like that I mean, what are these security tools that we should have attached to our websites yeah so if you if you have a, like a WordPress website there are what we call plugins that you can uh, use and there are a lot of free ones and there are a lot of uh, ones that you have to pay a little bit for. They're usually a little bit better, but you know, you can go with the free ones as well. Uh, yeah, and they, uh, yeah, there are basically software that's embedded in your, in your website. And oh, there's so many options there. Yeah, just to make sure that you get, uh, you, you know, if someone is trying to get into your website, you get an email. Uh, if it gets too much, if it happens once, usually your, 
your plugins will will protect you from that. But if you get a real attack, you're be you get an email. Um, so there's a few options there that you and don't go overboard either, uh, mm. because then it slows down your website. You don't want that. Mm. So yeah, talk about speed. The speed is another important thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's all balance. Everything's balanced, isn't it? Okay. So let's talk about probably the one that I'm sure confuses the most amount of people. It certainly confuses me, and that's um, step number five, which is your SEO. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, well, we've mentioned that that's really how does Google look at you, at your website. Um, so SEO, if you don't do anything, if you build a website, either Wix, Weebly, WordPress, uh, if you build it, Google sees it. So you straight away you get indexed, as they call it. Uh, Google knows you're there. And uh, if you have a URL and everybody will be able to find you, as long as you're online, you are there. The, so that's, you know, if, if, and that can be like that for years, uh, that there's nothing will change, but you will not be um, found by people by Google. So, so if people Google your, your business as a direct name, you will be found. But if people look for your service or a certain service or certain information, then um, Google only shows you and, and ranks your website and shows you at a certain spot in the Google ranking. So on, on a page and any, almost any term that we use, there's tens and tens and sometimes hundreds of pages of websites that actually have something about what people are looking for. So yeah, if you want to generate business with your website, if you want people, you know, if you're the dry cleaner from South Brisbane and you want to really be found by people, you have to make sure that you're uh, high in Google. So there's these 40 factors that Google looks at. Um, the most important ones are content. Uh, so good information, you, that makes a huge difference in, in how Google sees your website. Every page has to have about 800 words, more or less, 600 to 800 words. Uh, show and, and it has to be keyword related. So, you know, um, find the keywords that people will find you, look for you as a business owner. And make articles about that, show that you're knowledgeable about it and make sure it's unique. So write it yourself or have it written. Uh, don't copy it from someone else because Google knows. If it's copied, Google knows. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's quality of your content is very, very important. The, the, how fast your site loads is very important. And so all these things make uh, an overall ranking of your website. And that makes, uh, for Google, that, that's how you're ranking in, in, in where they will show your business when someone else looks for your service or your product. That's, mm. So, yeah, that's basically how it works. Wow. It's a lot. So um, I've been quite confused over the, the SEO and how many hashtags to put in and what keywords people are searching for and, mm -hmm. and, and how many keywords do you need for it to be effective? Uh, that really depends on which niche you're working in. Uh, there are niches where you can still have 20, but mostly we're looking at 100 keywords for the, yeah, and we start with 20 and then slowly it's, you know, it, it's a longer term. It, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, definitely. And uh, it depends on, on which, which niche you're in. Uh, it depends also on how old your website is. So uh, a website that's been around longer and has been seen by Google doesn't have to be really highly, uh, rated, but if it's been there, if if something's been done to it, then you sh then it's already a good tick. And uh, you know, as soon as you start to add things, Google will like that. So yeah, look at between twenty to um, eighty, a hundred keywords. Yeah. So what and that means is, if if say for example, if we took this particular interview and we did a transcript of it and turned it into a blog and put it on my website, I would need to look through the content to make sure I'm hitting at least 20 to 100 keywords relevant to my ideal customer. Um, no, a keyword, you would actually choose one main keyword uh, because every piece of content should really focus on one keyword. 
and then you can show that you're knowledgeable on that one part of you know what your business is so and you can have a, one or two sub ones but yeah we focus every page and every piece of content on one main keyword that we choose and it's actually best not to have two pieces of content on your website with the same keyword so and that's so there you go every page is another keyword so before you know it you you have quite some pages together wow this is this is complex all right so is this something that you work with your clients to identify the keywords so what type of um you know so let's talk about a brand new client what's the process yep. you would take them through to make sure they're not spending unnecessarily on their website but it's actually achieving their goals yeah, so what we, um, what we do with the client, we sit down and have a very good talk about their business. So I'm trying to understand what their business is about, what's important for them. And, and very often for people have a certain business and they want to expand to another area or, or several areas. So that's what we also try to, to map down. Okay, this is what you're focusing on now in your business. These are the things that you actually uh, want to attract in the future um then uh yeah i normally brainstorm with the client and say okay what do you think that people look for when they look for your specific business and um then we've done that i start to do uh, keyword research so there is quite a lot of research that we can do google gives us a lot there's still a lot of information available on what people look for uh links in in google between things that are uh, are, are available for us to find and that way we are trying to find the best keywords and which way we can grow so yeah that's how we do that and then we make a plan and we start with a basic website say okay these are your 10 main keywords for your business at the moment we'll start with those put all those keywords on the website in really good content uh, make sure that uh, the pictures are in there make sure that the pictures are named the keyword or something that's very close to it so don't put like picture number 20 on there always make sure that you tag your pictures with the with the keyword or with something that's close to the keyword very important as well so yeah that's way that way we slowly show google what the website is about and then we can add to it we make a plan to um to add articles on on different keywords on different subjects basically uh, to the website so, so what if you're dealing with someone who's been in business for a while and the and you know the landscape just changed and it's got much more complex and now google has all these requirements do you also mm -hmm. look at existing websites and go well here are some key things that you need to to change as a priority yes. these are things that are going to take time but get started yes. on them absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and it's actually fantastic to work with a website that's already been there for a while uh we've ha we have that uh yeah quite a lot at the moment I'd like i had a, a lady who's a um a wedding celebrant uh and uh she had a website already going for 18 months uh, it'd been built it looked okay um but nothing was happening and um so we just had a look at her website and said okay it looks good enough and uh there's nothing you have to change there but her pictures weren't named correctly they were huge because of course yeah like a wedding celebrant they have very good photographers and they have these huge pictures and she wanted them to be top quality so they were all on there and it didn't load at all um so yeah that's it's fantastic to work with that because she never had any inquiries for 18 months through her website nobody found her uh she was like i think like the 30 was the, the highest ranking she'd ever been but for us to change that to to change a few things like yeah, naming all the pictures putting some more content on there because her art the content she had her articles were very short we, we added to that uh had some some good extra new articles based on on keyword research that we found that people would be looking for as well and really in three months time she now gets inquiries every week and she's extremely excited and that's fantastic because the basis was already there if you start with a totally new website at least six eight twelve months before google starts to pick you up it, it, it's a longer term thing and of course when it's an existing website 
and it hasn't been hacked in a really bad way and a little bit has been done to it that's a fantastic base to start from so for us it's exciting as well because we have results we see results very quickly so we yes, love to it's very, satisfying. very yeah, satisfying very satisfying very so satisfying yeah. I'm, I'm quite curious you've got these two beautiful awards in the background what are they for um, they are for uh, website design and SEO. Um, so we joined because uh, we've done websites for a long time, but we felt, well, it changes all so quickly. So uh, last year we enrolled, uh, so my husband and I, we enrolled for the eBusiness Institute here in Brisbane. And um, the owners uh, are Matt and Liz Rath. They are definitely the, the SEO gurus uh, of Australia at the moment. So that was very exciting for us to be in their group, uh, with a group of 100 uh, students that has been with them for a whole year. And at the end of the year, they choose uh, their, what they feel this are their best students. And yeah, extremely excited that the big cup is what they call the Champions Cup. So we are champions SEO. Uh, the smaller one I got uh, somewhere during the year uh, as, as a small um, cup for website design for a, a website I designed and they really like that one but the big one is uh, what everybody's going for in a group at the end of the year is the champions cup so yeah we got that a few weeks ago oh congratulations yeah thank you very much absolutely very excited to uh, be recognized by them yeah so, so let's talk about how can people get access to you Lorraine and and your husband's services how can they find out more about you as well uh, yeah, we have a website <laughs> that we are sometimes working on, <laughs> uh, which is W3 Website Design Brisbane. So, but if you Google W3 Website Design, uh, we will come up. We'll definitely there, uh, and I can be uh, um, reached by phone, which is 0498 231218. 0498231218. You say it too quickly yourself. So, yeah, those are probably the easiest way to find us. And I'm on Facebook, Lorraine Seepers, as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really delighted. This has been packed with value. And I'm hoping that anyone who's watching this, either watching this on our YouTube channel and Facebook or listening to this on iTunes and Stitcher on the podcast version, that you are going to take the opportunity to reach out to Lorraine have that conversation with her, see where the quick fixes are in your existing website. And if you're considering starting again or starting from scratch, that you get expert advice right at the very beginning so that you don't waste time, you don't waste money, and you can grow your business in a way that makes sure that you are sustainable and you're not wasting time, energy, and money where you shouldn't be wasting it. So not that there's any way you should be wasting it, actually. Now I'm listening to my own words. So Lorraine, thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. I really enjoyed uh, talking about what I'm passionate about. So uh, always good. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. And so for everyone who's, um, if, if this is your first time to be tuning into the Hot and Healthy show or you're a regular listener watcher, make sure you go to NicoleVanHaddam.com and check out all the other episodes and all the other guests who've been on the show. There's a wealth of information there for you. So go and get yourself uh, hot in business and healthy for life. So until next time, bye for now. Bye. <laughs>